This image right here with the measly 4,600 views is the very first proof of evidence that we had hardcore mode coming. After that, five days later in 2011, the second taste of hardcore mode. Hardcore mode would then go on to be added to Minecraft Java Edition one day later on September 29th, 2011. Time jump ahead to modern era Minecraft, the bundles of bravery drop on Bedrock 1.21.50 and at last it's finally made it. Hardcore mode is here. How you doing everybody, it's me Waddles and welcome back to the Everything series. Our focus today is Hardcore Minecraft. Today we'll be talking key differences, your first day, the farms you need and even more. Down below this video, let's do something different. One tip for Hardcore Minecraft, your best one, drop it. While you're down there, tap that like button. And our story for Hardcore Minecraft officially on Bedrock Edition begins earlier this year with a 1.20.80.20 update. In the changelog for this update, the first official mention of Hardcore Mode for Bedrock Edition was mentioned. Fast forward ahead and kind of in a beautiful invisible string moment on September 28th, 2024, 13 years after we got our first in-game death screen image, Hardcore Mode was officially announced to release as part of the Bundles of Bravery drop on Bedrock. Now today's guide for Hardcore Minecraft is a little bit of a general guide. It's going to apply to, of course, both the versions of the game, but considering the fact that Hardcore Mode is brand new on Bedrock, we'll hone in on that a little bit more. With that being said though, on Minecraft to Java, to create a Hardcore Mode world, tap survival one time, and things will be flipped over to hardcore. By switching things over to hardcore on Java, the bonus chest is turned off. Now over on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, inside of this clean new world create screen, things will look a little bit different, but it's essentially the same. At the bottom of the general tab in the create a world screen, hardcore, flick that thing on. Ooh, and then the world is lit on fire. The frame around your world turns a deep red color and a hardcore heart that glows at the bottom, it's right there. On the other hand, within the confines of the vanilla game, not including diving deep into the files, if you've created a world already and you want to flip it over to hardcore mode, terrible news. Well, once you've created a world not hardcore, without file editing, you can't make it hardcore. Now, our key differences to hardcore mode will begin to notice them immediately when creating a world on the main menu. Once you flip your world over to hardcore mode, survival game mode is locked and hard difficulty is set in as well. One of the largest differences between hardcore mode and the other Minecraft modes is the fact that your difficulty is locked always to hard difficulty. That'll mean that all of the different perks and benefits, if you want to call them that, that come with playing on hard difficulty in Minecraft will be visible inside of hardcore mode. To be quite honest, there are so many differences between hard difficulty, normal, easy, and so on. On screen are some of the most major differences. But hardcore mode specific, another thing that is unique to hardcore mode is the fact that a starting chest and on Bedrock specifically a starting map, both of those toggles are locked off the menu, you can't do them. Meanwhile, many of the other world customization settings are still on the table. For example, that brand new sleeping player game rule, you can go ahead and adjust that one. Tile drops, TNT explosion loading, mob loot, and more. Still adjustable. Another thing that's against the rules, the terms of service, if you will, when it comes to hardcore mode is cheats. On Minecraft Bedrock and Java alike, all the cheats are 100% disabled in hardcore mode. But on Java, there's a little bit of a workaround that we'll talk about later. When you're finally ready to dive into your hardcore world on Bedrock, tap the World Create button and you get one final warning pop of letting you know that hardcore mode, it's forever. And just like that, after a little bit of loading, your adventure has begun. Now in game, instead of a hardcore Minecraft world, for the most part, everything is going to be the same. Take a look at those hearts. That's a big difference. The heart icon, I mean, it looks so much better and more, well, hardcore. Different hard hardcore icon aside though, everything when it comes to health, regeneration, taking damage, all of that business, so on, is exactly the same as hard Minecraft. Our only other unique characteristic of hardcore Minecraft is the fact that when your world is over, well, it's over. So that's the whole thing with Hardcore Minecraft. The idea here is that every move that you make matters a whole lot more. Every breath you take, it's a little bit more important. Let's say I did really poorly on my first day in Hardcore Minecraft. Well, when I do, this brand new screen for Minecraft Bedrock Edition will pop up. Instead of saying you died, it's game over. You get your cause and then two options down here at the bottom. You can either exit the world or if you want to, you can go ahead and spectate your world and take a look at everything that you accomplished, including, well, for me, definitely not some floating trees that I left around and as a side, a boatload of nothing.
On Minecraft Bedrock Edition, if you create a hardcore world, inside of your world like menu list screen right here, your hardcore world will have that same red frame from the menu and a glowing hardcore heart at the top corner. When you unfortunately game over in a hardcore world, that frame then gets grayed out and the heart, same too. Now with our major key differences talked about in the bag, I think it's time we jump into survival and talk a little bit more about day one. Because instead of a hardcore mode world, day one is definitely going to be your most important day. Inside of my world right here, kind of like the worst spawn possible, I'm going to have to get working right off the bat. By the end of a day one inside of hardcore Minecraft, two things that you absolutely need, a third would be really nice to have too. So if you've seen the guide series at all, all of those tips, of course, with hardcore mode essentially being the same, only a little bit more high stakes, every single one of those tips applies. I highly recommend diving into that series after this video, especially the early chunk will help you get established. But first things first, inside of my world right here, I need to look for sheep and I need to look for food immediately. If you end up getting a little bit of a less than stellar spawn with maybe a lot of sand and not so much wood, well, the beautiful thing about Bedrock Edition is render distance. You can crank that buddy up. Crank it up as high as you need to and look around for any signs of trees. In a sense, this bad world spawn right here is kind of only amplifying the difficult. Now, for hardcore Minecraft, let's take a note of this biome right here, the Stony Shores biome. This biome is actually kind of overpowered for this game mode because all over this biome on the surface, it's not too uncommon to find useful things like iron. A little bit of easy iron, maybe some coal and copper too. Well, those will definitely help you get geared up before you even consider diving into the caves. Oh, and I completely forgot to say this. I didn't follow the rule at all, but try and preserve your whole like running thing until you at least have a little bit of food. If you start sprinting around right off the bat without any food, your hunger will immediately start going down and on hardcore mode, again, same settings as hard difficulty. If you're not familiar with that, oh, well, yeah, it's gonna be an uphill battle. At last, a little bit of food. Ethical, it is not, but for now, it will do. Get your hands on a little bit of food, maybe ideally a little bit of renewable food. Absolutely find a sheep and before that first nighttime remove that sheep three times over a bed is absolutely one of the most important things for hardcore Minecraft get your hands on the bed get your hands on the food and then after that it's time to consider a little bit of shelter and now for hardcore Minecraft shelter is shelter if it ends up being a cobblestone box on the ground that's golden if it ends up being that good old-fashioned door in the side of a cliff that's great too but keep in mind that with doors in any situation in hardcore mode because it's hard mode Zombies will be able to break down doors. Just keep it in mind. Because of everything that they contain and offer, one of the most overpowered structures to find early game in a hardcore mode world is a village. If inside of a hardcore mode world, early on you can find yourself a village, you're bound to find a bed inside of it. There are probably hay bales sitting around. That's going to be great food early game. And of course, shelter the houses. I mean, just go ahead and borrow one of these houses for now. They even come with a security guard too. Now, there are tons of different general tips and tricks for hardcore Minecraft, especially early on inside of your world. For even more of those, I refer you to the Minecraft Guide series. For today, let's move on. And next up, what I'd like to talk about is farms. Farms are always one of the greatest things to have in any Minecraft world, but in hardcore, they will change your experience. You'll go from grinding it out on the ground with bread to eventually having a gigantic diamond to build in no time. The following farms are some of the most important farms for hardcore Minecraft. Consider building these things after you're set with your basic buffs, bed, food, shelter. A food farm. First things first, a good food farm. Now, ideally, you're going to want to look for having the best food farm in all of Minecraft inside of your world. You go ahead and start things off slow with your basic crop farm, but eventually maybe work that up to something like a cow farm or maybe even an automatic villager crop farm. When it comes to cow farms, the cow crusher, unfortunately, that's not really going to be a thing on Bedrock Edition, so your cow farm could be as easy as a simple penned-in area. Fences, walk in, feed the cows, take them out with, like, a looting sword once you get one eventually. Villager-powered crop farms are beautiful. On the other hand, these things are relatively easy to set up. Get your hands on a couple of different villagers, put them inside of a cage, and let them do their thing. Next up, and it's all kind of right here inside of the village, your next farm that you're going to want to consider getting your hands on as early as possible, an iron farm. Build yourself an iron farm and you'll have infinite iron like you do in normal survival. With an iron farm built, you'll have infinite supply of hoppers and infinite supply of hoppers. That means you can really go all in on setting up farms inside of your world. And because the risk here is greater than ever with hardcore Minecraft, I highly recommend leaning heavy into building farms. If building farms isn't something you usually do, I mean, it's a great learning curve too. Nowadays in Minecraft, there's a farm for almost anything. Flowers, food, you name it, there's probably a farm for it. Inside of your hardcore 
world, it's a smart idea to play it a little bit more slow and safe. To play it slow and safe, spend some more time over at your base, build it out, and try and get maybe every farm in the entire world. Ooh, now the Woodland Mansion. The Woodland Mansion is one of the greatest structures for hardcore Minecraft. Ah, but with that being said, don't make the mistake of heading here right away. You're gonna wanna gear up first. With that being said, though, the Woodland Mansion, I mean, it's home to a lot of different curious entities, but one of them will be the star of the show eventually for hardcore Minecraft. The Evoker. Ah, yes, this buddy right here. So every single Evoker in Minecraft has this cool little quirk where if I take this guy out, you get a totem of undying. And a totem of undying, well, that will literally save save your life. With the stakes in hardcore Minecraft being higher than they ever have been before, it's not a terrible idea to set up some kind of cool little farm involving the totem of undying just in case something bad ends up happening. You give yourself a second chance and your world's not gone forever. At least not yet. In Minecraft, though, you don't have to only go to the Woodland Mansion. There's an easier way to get your hands on those totems. So that way, well, of course, that's going to be a raid farm. These farms are a little bit tricky to set up, but once you get the hang of it, you know what you're doing. It's not bad. You build yourself a raid farm. I've got a handy design for one. I'll leave the card on screen right here. And in no time, you'll be able to safely, automatically, and easily farm yourself a totem of undying by doing basically nothing. That means with the new Minecraft 1.21 mechanics, consider building an ominous outpost farm as well. To use my raid farm and safely farm up totems, all you need to do is with the ominous effects, stand down under the ground in your chamber with the villager and wait. Eventually, the raiders will navigate to the center of the farm and when they navigate, they fall all the way down. You take them out in one swing. It's nice and easy. And the final farm that I want to talk about today, of course, every farm is a great farm to have, but a nice farm that'll segue us from farms to general tips is the Trial Chamber. If you're up for the challenge, head over to the Trial Chamber and try your hand at building a Trial Chamber farm. If this is your first one inside of your Hardcore World 2, maybe find one that doesn't have the bugs, they're really, really dangerous, but inside of your Trial Chamber structure, of course, depending on the mobs that you get, you could potentially set up a bone farm, definitely a wind charge breeze farm, maybe even a slime or rotten flesh farm, too. Even better about the trial chambers, this is one of the safest places you could be in hardcore Minecraft because the cool thing about the structure is, well, once you're inside of it, I mean, you're inside of it. And a big point that we talked about a lot during the development of the 1.21 Tricky Trials update, well, the trial chamber has no outside of mob spawns inside of this thing. That means if you come to this thing and say, remove every single spawner, or you come to this thing and build farms, traps around every single spawner, well, then you've got yourself a built-in safe dungeon with no mob spawning at all. It's kind of great. Another kind of great thing is the mushroom fields biome. If you're going to play hardcore Minecraft and you'd like to like ease your way into things, well, then maybe try and find yourself a seed with a mushroom island biome because just like with a trial chamber structure, the mushroom island biome will never have any hostile mob spawns at all. That makes this place ideal for setting up a base in hardcore Minecraft. For, for some great hardcore Minecraft seeds, I've got you. Tap this video on screen after we finish up today. Now from farm solidly into the part of the video where we're talking about some general tips and tricks, play it slow. In hardcore Minecraft, play it slow, play it safe, and every single time, skip that nighttime at least until you have good geared up armor. By play it safe, play it slow, I mean a couple of different things. The biggest thing, perhaps, is don't head and charge. Dive headfirst into a cave without any gear at all. Instead, maybe it's a little bit smarter to find alternative ways to gear yourself up before jumping into a cave system. Some great spots to collect up a bunch of coal before heading into the caves. Of course, any area in your world that has a lot of stone. So maybe look around in like the Stony Shores biome, or maybe head up into the mountains. The Stony Peaks biome specifically is a great one. Lots of ore and coal there. Same thing kind of goes for iron as well. The Stony Shores biome, look all over that place and you're bound to be able to find at least a couple of patches of iron. Get yourself some armor and a sword before going into the caves. Next up, a hardcore mode tip that's kind of a little more exclusive for Minecraft Bedrock Edition, the water. At all costs, avoid the water early game because inside of the water on Bedrock, the drowns spawn like insanely crazy over here, left, right, and center. By going into the water, you are putting yourself at a gigantic great risk immediately. One trident drowned at two hits from that buddy, and your world is over. Don't go into the water, or try to not go into the deep water until you have some armor. 
And with that being said, armor. Aside from bed, food, shelter, armor should be your, like, number four priority. Do everything in your power to get your hands on a little bit of armor ASAP. And maybe that's finding armor, trading for armor over at a village, or just grinding it out and getting a little bit of iron. But get your armor as quick as possible. And then, once you get your armor, you leave that armor on you for every single second and never removing it. Until, well, of course, until it's time to enchant. Then, once you have a level 30 enchantment setup or even just anything less enchant your armor even if it's iron armor it's not a bad idea to enchant anything and everything inside of hardcore minecraft again i can't say it enough time the stakes are high today do anything within your power to make the stakes a little bit less high that's going to include some good armor enchantment good armor is one of the most important things to have in all of hardcore minecraft and after you've grinded your way up to enchanted iron maybe got some really good armor maybe go ahead and level things up even more with enchanted diamond armor and eventually getting netherite as well of course, though, don't only focus on the armor. You're going to want to enchant the tools as well. One of the best weapons in the entire game for hardcore Minecraft is going to be a bow. The quicker you can build yourself up a power four, maybe power five bow with the other enchantments like infinity, the better. With good armor, good food for healing up pretty quickly, and a decent bow, you can really keep all threats at bay. I mean, really, like, look, you know how it goes. With the bow, we could go ahead and safely take out all hostile mobs, any enemies from far away, or even if I had to, by towering up on a single pillar of blocks and, you know, keeping myself safe for a little bit of time. If you can get your hands on the correctly beefed up of Power 5 bow, a lot of enemies become one-shot enemies, and you can take them out, like, instantly. But it's not all the bow. I'll admit it, I have a bit of a sorry to pass with the shield. I mean, you literally can't see anything. My job is to make videos to help you out to give you a good time. And with the shield, you can't see anything on the screen. But if you're not making a video, I mean, you don't sleep on a shield. These things could potentially save your life. Now, tips for hardcore mode. I could go on all day long. And maybe I will. If you guys want to see it, I'll totally make it a video where we go tip by trick across a bunch of different smart moves for hardcore Minecraft. But for today, check down in the comments. Hopefully, there's a bunch of tips down there. And if you want to see my follow-up video with even more tips, well, then all you got to do is let me know by tapping like. Now, hardcore mode, maybe you've played for quite some time and you're tired of the ease. You're something of a professional yourself and you're looking to up the difficulty even more. But to create what I'm calling harder core mode, start by enabling hardcore mode on your world. After that, slide into your advanced settings. Scroll down a little bit until you see this toggle for beds work and turn that thing off. Meanwhile, on Minecraft to Java, that same toggle, it's accessible essentially inside of the game rules tab. Sleep so percentage right here. If we set this thing to a value that is over 100, say 100, and one. Well, by disabling beds, that will mean nighttime is never skippable. You'll have to survive every single night. Another thing that you can do, but unfortunately over on Java to make your game more difficult, sounds counterintuitive, but you can go ahead and disable raids. By disabling raids, you will eliminate easy totem of undying farms. On Bedrock, because that toggle doesn't exist, or just in general, if you trust yourself and you want to be able to access totem of undying, well then just promise yourself that you're not going to cheat the system and farm totem of undying. Or maybe if you want to go harder, Urkor, no totem of undying at all. It's garbage, forget about it, it doesn't even exist. And so you've made it to the end of the Everything hey. Series episode today. Warmly, I want to send a huge shout out to you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Now lately, you know how we've been doing things, channel members, lots of world downloads. I did a world download for the previous Everything Series episode, the bundle one, but for this one, I really didn't have very much to offer, so I went ahead and skipped it this time. But if you want world downloads or just to support me in general, then tap that join button for a little bit more info. And after we wrap up here and I show you how to break hardcore mode, just check out the Everything Series playlist for even more guides that will change your life. Breaking hardcore mode. Hmm. So there are kind of two ways that you can cheat the system when it comes to hardcore Minecraft. That first way is going to be world backups. This will apply for both versions of the game. While playing your game frequently, or maybe right before you're about to do something really dangerous, go ahead and back out of your world, navigate over to your game file folder, specifically the world saves, copy that folder, paste it somewhere else, and just like that, you've backed up your world. That way, if something terrible and tragic goes down inside of the caves, well, no big deal. Just restore your backup. The other way that you could break hardcore mode, and this way is only possible on Minecraft to Java, to pause the game, open to LAN, allow commands, turn that on. You can adjust this if you want, it doesn't matter. Start LAN world. I'm inside of a hardcore world that was once 100% legit. Now, because commands are on, none 100% legit.
By opening your world up to land on hardcore mode, you can go ahead and mess around with any of the commands that you want to in the world. Whether that be the give command, whether that be creative mode in general, spectator mode, literally anything. That right there is maybe the ultimate way to break <laughs> hardcore Minecraft. And so that's it for today. 13 years in the making, hardcore Minecraft, it's finally on bedrock. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for more guides and updates soon. Subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.